Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about the new photos for the episode, which is coming out in just over a week's time, so it's not too long until we see the return of The Flash. It's been a very, very long time since the last episode. Super excited for the episode, but also to talk about these photos. And also we're going to be bringing up a theory that Eric actually posted on his channel, so obviously Eric's link will be in the description below. He is a great YouTuber, he is one of my favourites that I like to watch, and I highly recommend you guys go sub to Eric. I'm sure most of you are by now. But anyway, so, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, we'll go into the photos, but the first thing I wanted to bring up was the theory, because I think this theory that Eric has brought up, and I'm not sure if other people were theorising about it online, but when I saw it, I was like, hmm, okay, this makes a lot of sense, and it could actually happen. So there was an interview recently, I don't know how far away it was, like, when it was actually posted or where it's from, but I'm referencing Eric's video right here. So the showrunner, Eric Wallace, talked about how the Batcar villain is extremely personal for Barry, and I guess for the team as a whole, like, as personal as Reverse Flash, I think, was mentioned. So what could be as personal as Reverse Flash? Obviously you've got all this black hole stuff going on and it's not that personal apart from the fact that Iris is involved in this. So real Iris is in the mirror dimension. She's been stuck there for at least a month or so and she's been surviving in there with Eva. We found out the audience that Eva is evil, she has bad intentions and she is controlling what's going on and she is basically sending out these sort of clones or these like troopers I guess you would call them to do her bidding in the real world and one of them is a mirror version of Iris, our main character, Barbari. So what could happen? And Eric's theory is that Iris could potentially be the big bad for The Flash Season 6, the back half, and so I think this is a very high possibility that this could happen and since I saw the theory and watched the video I was like this really really could happen because she's doing this bidding for Eva and you remember she does have some sort of consciousness from what we've seen she's able to make up her own words come up with you know interpretations of her own she's able to go out and do stuff but she is in the end connected to Eva in some way she feels the same pain but what's to stop her from breaking away from her? What happens if this mirror version of Iris actually turns out to be the villain and breaks away from Eva and Eva is defeated and she's found out, but then this Iris continues and goes forward with our normal version of Iris still being stuck in the mirror world? I think there is a really high possibility that this could happen and I think it would be very good. Although I'm still kind of lukewarm on the villain this season, obviously we have blood work, I thought it was pretty good, it's better than Cicada, much better than the Thinker, but he was nowhere near as good as Savitar, Zoom or Reverse Flash, but I think it's an interesting idea that maybe Iris could be the villain of the back half, I was really hoping for either Godspeed or Red Death, but maybe that means they're saving say Red Death for another season, like a whole season long villain. That would be great. I really hope for a speedster villain next season. But yeah, so what do you guys think about this theory? I think it is very possible and I would like to see it to be honest. So let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, so let's move on to the photos for this new episode that is coming out in just over a week's time. And this is for episode 16. So obviously we've been in a break for a long time. Kind of forgot what's happened in the past few episodes apart from you go to the first photo and you see the return of Sue Dibney and Ralph. I don't think they were in the last few episodes, maybe Ralph was in it like briefly, but Sue hasn't been in it for a little while, or it feels like a long time anyway. So it's good to see Sue back because I really did like her in that one episode she was featured in, and I thought Ralph worked really well with her, and I thought, you know, there was a good dynamic between them, and I'm excited to see that continue. Then we move on, we've got the second photo which is them, they're in an office, it looks very fancy, they're all dressed up, Ralph I guess is in his normal gear that he's wearing, but then Sue looks like she's dressed up and you know the way Sue left, it wasn't obviously in the best way, like she basically just ditched and left Ralph, like at one point she in the vault and essentially just disappeared towards the end of the episode as far as I can recall. 
Anyway, so then we move on to the next photo. We've got her again in this investment office, it seems like. This capital investment office. And, you know, there's nothing much more that we can interpret from that. Apart from moving on to the next photo, you've got Ralph. He's all dressed up. He's entering the room, essentially. And then we've got one of the villains of the week. Ragdoll is returning. I think this is his third episode. I think he's pretty good. I think he is decent. But I think maybe they're starting to overuse him a bit. But I'm excited to see what happens to do with him because he is linked to Joe in this episode. Because Ragdoll is being hired by Black Hole, who are basically the back half villains. Which are, you know, linked to Mirror Iris. That's why I'm inferring that maybe she could actually take over from Black Hole. But Black Hole are sort of in the background right now. They're hiring people, some familiar faces like Ragdoll and some new faces as well. But yeah, so he looks cool, he's standing up, he's got his mask on, he's got a suit on, and yes, very tatty. But anyway, so we go on to the next photo, there is some sort of timer next to Cecile. Cecile has been captured because Ragdoll was tasked to get Joe, he probably couldn't get Joe, and then Joe turns up in some later photos which we'll get to, but Cecile has been kidnapped, she's got a thing around her face, she's not able to talk, she's all tied up. But there is some sort of device under her chair, so it seems like maybe it's explosives rigged to blow up by the time that Joe comes. Because you see this next photo, Joe does actually show up to this place. Maybe it seems a bit too easy that he's able to come and find her straight away, considering she has no formal contact unless she made him aware before she was kidnapped and, you know, he knew where she was going. But anyway, so you see it says 3.49, it seems like a timer and it does seem like this is like a C4 charge or something like that, ready to explode. And so they have to stop this from exploding because there's probably going to be a lot of damage. So moving on to the next photo, we've got Joe and Cecile again. Joe is talking to Cecile, he's sort of gesturing towards her so he seems to be very worried and Joe's in the hallway I'm guessing as he was approaching where Cecile was being kidnapped and being held he's got his gun out so I'm guessing he's about to fight Ragdoll or he's just about to find where Cecile is probably with the help of Barry as you can see in this next photo he's all in his suit looks really good very red and I think it's in the same place it looks very similar the background and, you know, basically the next photo is the same thing, Barry just like slides in. Just some cool photos. Okay, so then we go on and this does confirm what I was talking about. Barry is here with Cecile and Joe. And it seems like Joe is actually sitting down and putting himself there instead. So the timer is now on 1.14. So I don't know why Joe's sitting down. Is this like a form of defusal that they're trying to do? Like... Is he sitting there so it doesn't go off or something? Does someone have to sit there? I'm not sure why he would do this, but there's obviously some sort of reason. But anyway, Barry's there to help and get Cecile out, but it seems like Joe's sticking around. And the next photo, Joe seems very scared as he sits on that same chair with the explosives next to him. So then we go over talking about Iris like we did earlier. We've got her with Barry. I don't know if this is normal Iris. I'm guessing it's mirror version of Iris. And so they're in Star Labs and he's got some gloves on so they are, I'm presuming, doing some scientific research or something like that with these devices seen. And so, you know, they're working together, I guess, maybe fixing whatever this is, I don't know specifically. But it seems like maybe it's to do with what happens with Cecile because Cho is in Star Labs, Cho is with Barry, Barry gives him something so... Maybe it's some sort of device. Then we move on to Barry and Iris as they talk again together. And I don't know what else to interpret, but Joe's here as well. And that's about it for these photos. So there is some stuff to interpret. Most of it is just pretty simple. Like you can just see it from the images. But I thought we had to talk about it because, you know, it's the first piece of news, like proper news we've had in a long time. So anyway guys, The Flash is returning very very soon, just over a week's time, so please be sure to subscribe if you're new, and be sure to leave a like and a comment as well about today's topic and anything else you want to comment about. But anyway guys, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye.
icy room. 